You don't often meet people in their adult ages with braces. So the training data for AI models is definitely also not gonna see a sufficient number of samples of people with braces. And that's gonna lead to some issues with how realistic and representative the results are. So today, I'm going to put AI models like image generation and AI cloning to the test and see how well they can handle a baddie with braces. So let's dive right into AI cloning. And afterwards, I'll compare the results with image generation. The results? might surprise you. AI cloning. Uh, it goes by many names. Some like to call it digital twins. But most don't want to call it a deepfake due to the misuse and ethics surrounding it. But whatever your marketing nomenclature preference, it is still the same thing at the root of it. Fake faces, either your own or somebody else's. And they are one of the latest developments in AI tech and AI commercialization. And there's two companies leading the effort on this, Synthesia IO and HeyGen. You might recognize Synthesia from the Wall Street Journal doc done on it. It came off as a full-blown effort with video capture, voice capture, and script reading. At a professional studio in New York, the company recorded me doing a series of head movements and reading through a rather odd pre-written script. Positive thinking will help you believe in yourself. After that, I headed to an audio studio where I recorded another script for about an hour. Whereas Heijun seems a lot friendlier and easier for everyday consumers. Kind of like the Canva of AI cloning. So I'm going to be using Heijun for my AI cloning today. Not a sponsored video, but maybe soon. <laughs> Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and I appreciate you. So putting HeyGen to work, the process is relatively simple. I upload a video of myself talking about whatever I want to that's supposed to be two to five minutes long. I give away all of my rights via voice signature. I pledge allegiance to the States of America. I make sure to show my teeth more often than usual when I'm talking so that the model has an opportunity to see my braces. I do it all from the comfort of my home. I have a green screen, but that's not required. Then I wait a few minutes for it to train, or rather fine tune with the video I just provided. All right, everyone. So we're moving to my computer screen now. It's ready. So let's see the result. Check it out. Yay. The tech trance. Your instant avatar is ready. Feel free to create videos with it. Also, click the feedback button to share what you think. Hope you enjoy. I am shook it. Pause for mental breakdown. Psychologically, I don't know if humans are meant to witness themselves doing something that they didn't do. That is me, but also not me. So you kind of feel like your livelihood, your humanness was captured and like stolen. Kind of like Ariel the Little Mermaid. But instead of her voice, it's like your whole being. <laughs> Let's keep going. Can't stop, won't stop, said AI. How do you feel about this? Do you welcome this, this path that we're on with AI? Do you think we're going too far? So who knows, maybe they'll combine AI cloning with uh, genetic cloning in the future and then voila, voila. Humans are gonna render themselves redundant. Philosophical Inquisition complete. I really have to compliment it for its realism, um, for capturing the nuances. It does a good job with like separating the background from the foreground. And I don't see any distortions in my face. It captures like my face really well, like my little hairs really well too. So my AI avatar looks realistic. You know, it looks like me, it's moving. To an outside viewer, they likely wouldn't be able to tell that that wasn't me. But now the other question I pose is, is this representative? 
Meaning, if my AI clone read a script and I read a script, would they resemble one another? Basically, I will be the ground truth and the AI model will be the output that I compare to. I'm not gonna run a loss function on it or anything, but you know, a side-by-side -side comparison and then you be the judge yourself. Hi everyone and welcome to the Tech Trance. My name is Tam and I'm a machine learning engineer based in Silicon Valley. And now I'm creating content on AI, ML and tech and putting a fun spin on it and keeping it engaging while not missing a beat on any of the facts. So I hope you'll join me on this journey. The AI robot takeover is imminent. So let's empower ourselves with AI knowledge and I hope to see you around, nerd. Hi everyone and welcome to the Tech Trance. My name is Tam and I'm a machine learning engineer based in Silicon Valley. And now I'm creating content on AI, ML and tech and putting a fun spin on it and keeping it engaging while not missing a beat on any of the facts. So I hope you'll join me on this journey. The AI robot takeover is imminent, so let's empower ourselves with AI knowledge and I hope to see you around. Blow kiss, nerd. <laughs> Phew. My humanness is safe. For a minute, I thought that these AI clones could replace content creators. And as someone who's just starting out, that worried me a little bit. But now I have a little reassurance that that will be still a ways, a ways away. They can look like you and they can sound like you, but they can never be you. Can the AI model do this? I didn't think so. The, the audio to mouth movement is not matching. And I'm squinting my eyes, but like for no reason. Like, I'm sure I did that in my training video, but now it's putting it in the test video and taking it a little too far. I notice also it, the upper lip is shown a lot to cover my teeth. I don't, I'll have, let's zoom in on the teeth here and see how well it reflects the races. Let's zoom in. Based in Silicon Valley. And Where are my braces? Content on AI, they took ML, out my and braces? And putting a fun spin on it and keeping it engaging while not missing a beat on any of the facts. So I hope you- I mean, granted my teeth look great and straight. That is the future me for sure. But that means that AI models for cloning were only ever trained with people without braces, which was why I posed the question in the first place, because I know that uh, cases like me are rare. This indicates that HeyGen's model has not seen enough samples with braces, possibly overfit to plain teeth, and now it can't generalize to other dental situations. So when it's inferencing on my data, it thinks that my braces are noise. So then it corrects for it and overrides it with what it thinks that should be there. What else do you think it indicates? Overall, as mind blowing and as jaw dropping the experience on HeyGen was, it still did not pass when it came to braces. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to give it a zero out of 10. Aww. But all's not lost yet. We still have image generation, and for this, I'll be using Dolly. I put in an adult female smiling with braces, because remember, plenty of kids have braces, but the edge case is adults. Okay, zooming in, that's pretty good actually. One bracket per tooth, centered nicely. It looks like we have blue braces on today. There's some blur, but that's way better than I expected. At least it's producing braces, unlike somebody else we know. Okay, this is really impressive already, but maybe this was just beginner's luck. Let's see how it does on another one. Ah, uh, it does worse on these other samples. The wire's disconnected, the teeth and gums are all muddled, and the brackets are not bracketing. And this is why you should run your tests multiple times. With something as non-deterministic as deep learning, it can't just be a one and done type of process. You have to continuously validate it. All right, but I'm the test case here for comparison. So let's get her closer to resembling me. Asian adult female smiling with braces. <gasps> Oh my God, what did they do to my Asian sister? Those are some snake wires. Okay, fine, pretty good on this sample, but still not as good as the first sample that we had. Okay, but I'm a natural blonde, so let's get this right. Ugh, it's giving Sally sells, she sells by the seashore. Okay, better on this one, but still not realistic. Okay, I'm blonde, but not the Caucasian type of blonde. More like the Belage type of blonde. Wow, she's really starting to resemble me, even with how the roots are starting to come out black. 
Wow. Okay. Not so bad. Like sea shelly and marbly. But the teeth are good. The gums are good. And there's a distinguishable wire and one distinct bracket per tooth. Oh goodness gracious. You have something stuck in your teeth. And the whole row on the bottom there. I, I can't. I can't. This is making me nauseous. Those lashes are looking really good though. Dolly really said on the original Asian, they'll have no eyelashes, but on the blonde Asian, they'll go together with fake eyelashes. <laughs> All right, so overall, how do we rate image generation for braces? Well, it's definitely better than AI cloning because it at least acknowledges the existence of braces. But as we saw, there's still a lot of artifacts and distortions and inconsist <laughs> inconsistency with it. It's like DeepMind, but in braces form. Also, did you notice how in all of the samples, the teeth were relatively straight? That like defeats the purpose of getting braces. So let's see how Dolly does with crooked teeth. Ah, okay. Well, it, no, nope. This is making me realize that all of the training data has simply been people with Colgate smiles. Where are the people with the quirky smiles and the asymmetry? Representation, dental diversity. <laughs> okay, so clearly image generation has not yet grasped the concept of dental diversity. I give it a four out of 10. It at least tries to represent braces, but they don't look realistic yet. Nora has understood the concept of crooked teeth, which is relevant to braces. Okay, so we've seen for two AI models, AI cloning and image generation, that braces is still an area of weakness for them due to a lack of sufficient training data or variation in the training data. Dolly, no matter how much data it's scraped from the web, I'm actually not sure about that. It's still not able to believably, cleanly, accurately generate braces. It's close, but still a ways to go. Whereas for Heijen, I believe part of the reason is that they are overcorrecting for the noise that is braces. So if they reduce the parameter for that weighting and overcorrection, then they could have a good shot at generating braces. And as always, the way to bridge the gap on these edge cases is with more training data and more training for the models possibly even bigger models. So for this, the demand for AI hardware and AI software will go up. NVIDIA is spearheading these efforts, and just a few weeks ago, they announced some major contributions to the AI revolution. If you missed our keynote or don't wanna watch all two hours of it, I made a nice and simple breakdown of it in 20 minutes without missing any of the details. So if you wanna catch up on that, I have it linked right here. Enjoy, and I'll see you all next time.